Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Backstage with Milan. In this video, I want to talk about a very important report. It's a report about 100 great startup ideas that you can build in 2025. This report is from Antler India, and what they have done is they reached out to 100 great people in our startup ecosystem. This includes the best of the best founders and the leading people at different venture capital firms. And it asked these people to give one great startup idea each, which they are really interested in and which they think can get really big in next 5 to 10 years. See, it's becoming easier and easier for all of us to build a startup today, especially with these great AI tools. But what's still difficult is to really understand what the market needs. What do VCs think is a great idea? And through this report, we get a chance to hear directly from these people on what a great idea is. Also, they have categorized these ideas in seven different themes such as AI, health, fintech and SaaS. And what I'll do in this video is pick one idea from each of these themes and then talk about it. If you want to go through all of these ideas, I'll provide a link in the description to this complete report. Check it out even if you're not going to build it. This is a gold mine for people like me and I hope you will like it too. Before we start, I just want to mention that we are now part of Zero Dha Zero One Network. And now let's talk about this report. The first idea I want to talk about is building AI solutions for India's SMEs. And this idea is by Akrit Vash, who had earlier built and sold Haptic AI and is currently the advisor to the government for India AI mission. And his idea is simple to develop AI-powered tools tailored for the informal economy and small to medium enterprises. These sectors remain underserved by technology, particularly in areas like financial planning, customer management and operations. See, you would have seen this in newspaper headlines and even read it in economic books that SMEs are the backbone of India. They make up for almost one third of our economy and employ around 10 to 12 crore people. But what if I tell you that this entire sector is going through a major crisis? The manufacturing businesses are losing out to Chinese factories and Kirana stores are shutting down in record numbers thanks to quick commerce and other internet businesses. Last year alone, more than 2 lakh Kirana stores shut down as they couldn't compete with new age businesses. Now, why is that? Firstly, these SMEs don't have access to good technology. So you can build AI tools that simplify tasks like bookkeeping, inventory management, digital marketing and customer retention for these micro businesses. Yes, I know there are tools like Khatabook already, but what I'm talking about is more advanced and intelligent. The idea is not to just keep record of your sales, but also to give you insights on things like how to compete on price or how to stock up your inventory before a big festival. Next feature that you need is a voice first interface that understands and speaks multiple Indian languages. So all a shopkeeper needs to do is ask questions like what are my total sales today or what product is expected to see increased demand during Diwali and this tool answers them in their local language. And finally, these tools can be integrated with everyday apps these people use. Things like WhatsApp to stay in touch with their customers or UPI for instant payments. This entire problem is a massive opportunity. I mean, the first wave of Indian startups that solve for this like Misho, Udan and Khatabog are massive companies today. But these solve for very specific use cases and also they didn't reach to every business owner. With the help of AI and other DPI tools available today, a small team sitting in Bangalore or really anywhere can solve for the entire country. The next idea is by Paroma Chatterjee, who is the CEO of Revolut India. And her idea is in the fintech space and it's about building the future of payments using biometrics. According to Paroma, biometrics will transform the future of payments. We are looking at a future where making payments become ridiculously convenient and even more secure than they are today. Imagine a world where you no longer need to remember passwords, enter card details or sift through OTPs. Instead, your face, fingerprint or even your voice becomes your payment key. See, we already have a very seamless payment infrastructure. In most cases, we take out our phones, scan a QR code or just pay directly to a phone number. But this still has multiple issues. Firstly, it's not as seamless as it could be. We still have to remember our passwords, input our account number or OTPs and also carry our cards or phones to make the payment. And biometric payments can make all of this very seamless. You enter into a store, do your shopping and at the time of the checkout, just tap a finger or just look into a screen and your payment is done. Already, companies like Amazon and Mastercard are working on solutions to help people pay with their palms or their fingerprints. In India though, it's still in very early stages and that's why there's a big opportunity. India already has one of the most advanced payment infrastructure in the world. All you have to build is one authentication layer, which uses biometrics instead of password or OTPs to verify a person's identity. One big challenge here could be security. According to Paroma, 
Protecting biometric data requires robust encryption solutions to ensure that your data cannot be reverse engineered or exploited. And to ensure this, you have to combine technologies like liveness detection, which makes sure that the person who is making the payment is actually present there. You can also combine multiple authentications, for example, a fingerprint with an OTP, and that makes sure that it's much, much harder to break. Before I get into the next idea, I just want to tell you a little bit about Antler. Antler is a global early stage investor, which means they back the founders right at the idea stage, or sometimes even before that. They have something called a residency program, where founders go to find their co-founders, refine their ideas, get guidance, and if they are lucky, also get a seed fund to kickstart their startup journey. Antler is currently the world's most active investor in AI startups. So if you are in that early stage of your startup, or maybe you want to pursue one of the ideas from this report that I'm talking about, then feel free to check out Antler. The next idea I want to mention is from the deep tech category. And it is from Somitra Sharma, who is an early stage investor at Operator Studio. And his idea is that India should leverage its massive talent pool, manufacturing base and global expertise to build robotic solutions for the world. See, India has the second largest number of STEM graduates in the world. Every year, we produce almost 5 to 10 million of these, which is almost one third of the world. Along with this, we have great research labs, a growing manufacturing base and favorable government policies. And this makes for a very exciting ecosystem for building robotic solutions out of India. We already have companies like Grey Orange and Adverb, which are building for the world. But this sector is just starting. I mean, robots are still limited to giant factories. They have not become part of our daily lives. And that's where a major portion of opportunity lies. You can start by picking up a very specific problem that your robot can solve. It could be assisting kids with their education or even a robot that plays sports with you. Don't go for a general purpose robot to begin with. Slowly, you can add more capabilities to it. Next, in terms of manufacturing, the Indian government has major incentives for manufacturers under Make in India and PLI scheme. And these benefits will help you make cheaper robots compared to the Western market. So the way our software engineers provided IT services to the world for decades, our hardware products can now do the same. We have the talent, the right policies and a great geopolitical environment where the world is looking for alternatives for Chinese made products. So great time to build in robotics. Moving on to the fourth idea, which is in the consumer segment. And it is by Nitin Sharma, who is also the founding partner at Antler in India. And his idea is to use Gen AI to build the future of learning. See, the sentiment around edtech in India is not great as of today, especially after cases like Baiju's. But Nitin thinks that because of generative AI, now is the moment to build entirely new products, experiences and business models for learning. See, in the past, technology change was mostly about change in mediums. We moved from PCs to the internet and then mobile and cloud. But as I said, only the medium changed and not the knowledge. But Gen AI is different. It learns and then also generates brand new content, which was not possible earlier. So let's see what's possible now. You can make an AI tutor that guarantees learning outcomes, basically shifting edtech from sales heavy to outcome based models. So for example, while learning languages, there are these levels A1, A2, B1, B2 and C1, C2. So imagine an app that charges you only when you move one level up in your language learning journey. Same way you can do it for other subjects, pay only if you learn this particular chapter in maths. I mean that will transform education. In addition, AI can make learning more interactive in the form of quizzes, debates, personalized tutors and even different modes of learning for different students. And finally, if you're looking to scale it pan India, you need to add the capability of multiple languages. This way, a student can learn the same course in Punjabi, Telugu or any other local language. The next idea is in the climate sector and it is by Nikhil Basu Trivedi of Footwork. The idea is fairly simple, clean our air, which is a multi-billion dollar opportunity. See, if you ask anyone, what are the top three problems when it comes to quality of life in India? I'm sure air pollution would be there in top three. It became a hot topic recently when Brian Johnson left an interview in Mumbai complaining about the air quality. But the problem is that most of us look at the government to do something and fix it. But that's not happening. We have to find solutions through entrepreneurial innovation. So how to go about solving this idea? Well, firstly, you need to understand the problem in Indian context. We have air pollution through vehicles, industrial waste, construction and stubble burning by the farmers. So if you're building solutions like direct air capture, it needs to be tailored for specific pollutants and scale. Also, this technology requires a genuine breakthrough. I mean, you have to find a solution that not only works, but it's also very, very affordable. You need to collaborate with colleges like IIT Madras and their research labs. 
to find the talent who have been working on such solutions and who can work for years to find something that works. Then you need to find your business model, who will pay for it. Is it the large industries, state governments or even individual buildings or societies? Also, if you want to scale it, you need to work with government bodies like CPCB and state pollution boards. And finally, you need access to patient capital. This is a deep tech problem, so it'll require years of R&D and a lot of money to keep going. Thankfully, today we have a lot of VC funds and angel investors who are interested in funding such ideas. Also, there are many government grants. For example, there is this grant called Entice, where the government will pay you a grant of $500,000 if you have a great idea in solving climate related issues. So this money, this talent, all that's needed is for you to start building. The next idea is in the health sector. And it is by Nidhi Mathur, who is a venture partner at Axelor Ventures. And this idea is very, very relevant for today and the world 10 years later. The idea is to build health solutions for people in their 50s and 60s. This is how India's population looks like when you divide it age-wise. You see, the majority of them are in this section, 0 to 24 years of age. But if you see how this data will look like in 2040, there's a dramatic change. The majority now falls in this section, the 35 to 54 age bracket. And in terms of numbers, it'll be around 250 to 300 million people. Already, there are more than 100 million people in this category. And what's special about this category of people is that they have good money. They've worked all their life and have saved quite a bit of money. Also, this is the time when people start taking their health seriously. So, this is a great opportunity to build solutions around healthy aging, rejuvenation, longevity aesthetics and zero nutrition. These people with money want to look good and healthy. So, there are massive businesses to be built around it. In the Western markets like the US, this segment is already exploding and the VC money will come to India as well in the next few years. So what you need to do to begin is start with a specific need. It could be a luxury wellness retreat or premium science packed zero nutrition products or even at home personal trainers to help people with exercise in yoga. And once you have cracked a specific use case, you can then offer more services to the customer base you have already built. And as I said, VCs are also looking at this category very carefully. And many of them have stated clearly that they are looking to invest in a healthy aging startup. So again, there's money, the time is right, all you need to do is begin. And the last idea I will talk about in this video is from the SaaS sector. And it is to build the next wave of global services using India's talent base. And this idea is by Gautam Mago, who is a general partner at A91. According to Gautam, India produces 10 million college graduates annually. Yet, we haven't fully harnessed this vast, young and skilled workforce to serve the world. See, the BPO or the business process outsourcing industry has gone through multiple stages. In 90s, there was BPO 1.0, where companies in the West shifted a lot of their work to India to reduce costs. The work was mostly repetitive and less complex, but the main idea was to save money. Then came BPO 2.0, where the focus shifted from cost cutting to improving efficiency and a general standardization. The job evolved from picking up calls to now providing technical assistance, bug cleaning and even making some parts of the software. Now as a result of AI, we are moving to BPO 3.0 and 4.0, where the idea is to combine AI with human expertise to work on more complex problems. Think of jobs like data annotation, hyper-personalized customer experience support, or even opening a back office for all types of global firms here in India. See, because of AI, there's a fear that many of the back-end office and support jobs will go away. But if we can show that we can still provide high-quality services with the same cost benefit to an American company, we can still give jobs to millions of people here in India. The thing that's working in our favor is our experience. For more than 25 years, India has worked as a back office for global companies. We know how the process works, what's the opportunity. And so this could be a great business, both in terms of giving jobs to a lot of people and also to make a highly profitable business. So that's all from my side in this video. I'll provide a link to this complete article in the description. Go through it, dissect these ideas and tell more people about them. The idea is for more and more people to read it so that at least some of us could go out and build them. And if you liked any of these ideas and are looking to pursue them, then feel free to reach out to Antler. If they like your pitch, you might even get a seed funding to start your journey. Anyways, let me know in the comments which idea did you like the most and if you have any questions about them. I'll try and reply to as many comments as possible. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.